just talk about uh, doing a Laplace transform. Uh, just an example like we talked about in class. I was going to report some examples of just working these through in excruciating detail. Um, for this example, we use our DC motor. I've used that in a couple other videos that we've done. And so that makes it convenient. So it's kind of a continuity thing. Um, again, just to review the DC motor, we have the electrical side of the motor here. We have a voltage source. The windings in the motor have some resistance. There's an inductance in the windings. Um, there's the back EMF generated as the, uh, the windings rotate in the magnetic field of the permanent magnet DC motor. So it generates a voltage which opposes the voltage applied. Um, on the mechanical side, we have a rotating inertia, we'll call it J, and it rotates at some speed omega. The equations that we describe all this, we've had these before, right? Just applying Kirchhoff's law around this voltage loop where the sum of the voltages have to be zero. We can say that the voltage drop across the inductor plus the voltage drop across the resistor plus the voltage drop for, for the back EMF is our so equal to our source voltage. The voltage across the resistor, Vr, equals I times R, Ohm's law. The voltage drop across that inductor, Vl, is L di by dt, or we'll write it L times I dot. On the mechanical side, uh, Newton's law accelerations of torque over the rotating mass, J. Um, we can take our acceleration, integrate it, and get our speed, omega. And then we have the equations here, which correlate, which connect electrical and the mechanical half. The back voltage is at some constant times the speed. So whatever speed this is running, that's going to determine what that back EMF is. And the torque that's available to accelerate the motor or decelerate it, whatever, is some constant times the current in this loop. And I'm ignoring some uh, things like friction or load torques or things like that. Just just to keep the problem a little bit simple and, and, and a little bit less writing. So let's let's take off of this. Um, to do to create the Laplace transform, I need to take all these equations and put them into a single ordinary differential equation um, that we can then transform with a single input, single output. So we put all these together. Let's start off by taking our Electrical, on the electrical side, taking the, the equation for the voltage loop, Kirchhoff's law, and I can substitute I times R for the voltage of the resistor. I can substitute L di dt for the voltage of the inductor. Um, Vb, I can substitute this term here. Vs is just um, the source voltage, which is our input. Okay, And so I end up with L I dot plus I R equals, oops, I'm sorry, I equals plus K B constant for the back EMF times omega equals V S, and that's S for source, not to be confused with the Laplace operator S, right? Um, Now my acceleration, really, we should have uh, written that as omega dot. Okay. Um, now omega dot equals, I can substitute um, for torque, I can substitute these, this, uh, these two terms in here. So I get omega dot equals K torque times I over J. Solve that for I. I get I equals omega dot J over K T Q, okay? And that I can um, you know, also note that I'm going to need a I dot, right? So if we take the derivative of this, I dot equals omega double dot J over K T Q. Now I can substitute in for all the current terms, and now that would give me a differential equation in terms of the inductance, resistance, these constants, um, and the speed and derivatives of the speed, all the things that uh, we need. So then that ends up as 
omega double dot L J over K T Q plus omega dot R J over K T Q where I'm just substituting these terms for current and that term for the derivative of the current plus and I have to erase that so that was for planning plus K B times omega is equal to our voltage source. Okay? So there is a simple differential equation that we derive from this set of equations here. Fairly straightforward process, I hope. So now this is what I can transform into the Laplace domain equations. So given our differential equation here, where we have omega double dot, omega dot, omega and Vs, I can now do the Laplace transform. Now let's go back to the Laplace transform for a moment and recall that the Laplace transform of dx by dt is Laplace transform of x, so it's uppercase x of s times s, because multiplying by s is our uh, derivative in the Laplace domain, minus x sub zero, our initial conditions. Okay. So given that, um, for the second derivative, if I take the derivative of this, so Laplace transform of t x by dt equals well if I first derivative is multiply first derivative is multiplying by x, second derivative would multiply by s again. So essentially, you know, we can take this and I'll multiply that by s, so I get s squared times x of s minus x s x of zero and that's the initial value of x, that's actually the small x of zero, the value in time domain at time equals zero, minus x dot of zero, the initial acceleration. So given this transformation to get from, so omega dot, double dot would be, you know, s squared minus the initial condition. So we can take that equation down here, take the Laplace transform essentially by inspection. So omega double dot is s squared um, omega, and I'll, I'll get fancy here since we usually do it. Omega of s, make it an uppercase omega, um, minus s omega zero minus omega dot zero that whole quantity times the um, L J over K torque. Okay, that's this term plus my omega dot becomes S omega of S plus minus omega zero and that's times my resistance times J, my rotating inertia divided by the K torque and then my last terms become plus K B omega of s equals v s of s. Okay? The Laplace transform of our source voltage, whatever that is. So I can multiply this out, gather like terms, and I end up with L J, a rotating inertia, Reductance over K torque, the constant getting from current to torque, S squared 
minus R times J over KTQ times S plus KB is my omega terms. Omega of S and I'll put the initial conditions on the other side equals V S of S times L J over K T Q times S plus R times J over K T Q Those are my omega or omega zero terms. And then I have one more initial condition I have to move over here. That's the L J over K T Q omega zero dot. And make sure that's right. Right, okay. So one last step here. Um, I'm going to divide through by this term right here just because it actually cleans things up quite a bit. And I get S squared plus, well this is R times J over KTQ times KTQ over L times J. And most of these cancel out, and I'm left with R over L. R over L S plus K B times K T Q two constants the torque and back voltage over L times J and all that times my Omega of S. Yeah. Yeah. Equals. And when I divide through by th uh, this term on this side, that's going to cancel completely. Oh, I have, I have K T Q over L times J times D S of S. Uh, uh, this is the time, this is the plus. Plus S plus, and then here the same thing, I end up with the same R over L times omega zero, and then this should cancel out right here. Yes, and I end up with omega dot zero. Okay? So there is. I'm going to erase some of these intermediate steps in the room. So there is my Laplace domain equation, okay? And I can convert that into a transfer function just by dividing through by this term here in parentheses. So I have a uh, equation for omega of s itself. So omega of s equals, well I have the input here, my voltage term, KTQ over L times J, K torque over L times J, and I divide it through by that polynomial S squared plus R over L S plus K B times K over L times J times that, so that is times the S of S. Okay? So this is how the system responds to an input signal plus um, 
Um, <coughs> my numerator is a little bit more complicated down here. S plus R over L omega zero plus omega zero dot all divided by this same polynomial again S squared plus R over L S plus KB times KTQ over L times J and now I have my Laplace transform of omega, our speed, our output as a function of the input V of S and as a function of the initial conditions. And when we do our analysis, um, what we'll likely do is we can actually do these two separately and because we're assuming it's a linear system, we can analyze the response as a function of the inputs and then separately analyze the response as a function, as a function of the initial conditions, assuming a non-zero and then just add those two responses together. <coughs> we can do our transfer function analysis just by looking at the poles and zeros of one or the other of these, or both of these. Obviously, both of these equations have the same poles, which determine stability and things like that, because they have the same denominator. But we'll get to that in the next video. Bye.